What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. We're here in our second episode of our Chat GPT bot uh, series. We're here just to wrap it up. Uh, we're just gonna build out the custom table view cell. All right, so let's get into it. So we we pretty much wrapped up everything. We just need that custom table view cell, like I said. So you're gonna go to Cocoa Touch class. Make sure you have table cell. I'm gonna call this a Chat table view cell. And you hit create, and now we can delete all that. I'm gonna call super init. And then just pass in the style and then reuse identify. Oh. All right. Hit command B and then you'll get an error. Just hit fix. That's the required initializer. That has to do with storyboards. But we're not using storyboards, so it doesn't matter. And then we need to create a table view cell identifier. And we'll call identifier. And we'll just call it the name of the cell. All right. And in this cell, we need a chat label which uh, let's use an anonymous closure UI label. All right. And let's use, a, we're gonna have a UI view that's gonna be like the background of the label. It's gonna be the background of the label that creates that bubble in like the messaging app. You know how there, there's a bubble. <laughs> Basically, yeah, that's how you get that implementation because if you use the just the chat label, the formatting might be a little weird. Like it's not gonna be symmetrical. It's gonna look all ugly. So we're gonna use the that UI view to make it look nice. So we need to create a label and return the label. And we actually, we don't need to do that much here. We just need to translate auto resizing to false. Label number of lines to zero. Label, what else do we need? Um, label, um, what do we need for all that? Uh, we'll keep it like that for now. The view is a UI view. We'll return the view. View dot translate auto returns into false. View, uh, what else do we need? We want to set a quarter radius. All right. And what else do we need here? We'll, we'll need some other stuff, but let's just configure our UI first. So private func. Configure UI, and we need to add the the label and the the bubble to the view, to the sub view. Sorry, bubble view. We can lay out our constraints. All right, for the chat label, we want to anchor it from the top. We do top anchor. We'll do eight. Chat label. We'll do bottom anchor as well. Constraint bottom anchor to eight, chat label. And then the last one we want to do is the width anchor. And we actually want to use the less than or equal to constant. And let's do like 275. What this is going to do is the biggest that the chat message thing can be is like 275. And the less than allows it to be smaller in case it's like a message just says hi or something. <laughs> All right. And then we want to lay out the bubble view. And a cool thing about laying out the bubble view is we can lay it out using the chat label. And we can just make it eight pixels bigger from every side. And this is, and we do that by, by having this negative here in the top anchor. Cause usually with a top anchor, if you're using the, the view, you have a positive like you have here. Like here, this constraint makes a chat label eight below the top anchor. But what this one is doing, it's gonna make it, it's gonna make the bubble view eight above the top anchor for the chat label. And we're just gonna do that for all of these. For the top, bottom, left, right. <laughs> Negative eight, bubble view dot trailing anchor constraint, chat label dot trailing anchor constraint. We'll do eight. Bubble view, bottom anchor. Oh. And if you notice for the bottom and the trailing, we use positive eight just to get that opposite effect. All right, and we're pretty much set. I'm just gonna create this configure function here that we're gonna call in our view controller to configure the cell. And what do we wanna do? So in this configure, you're gonna pass in a text, which is a string. And we'll pass in a variable called isUser, which lets us know is the message from a user or from the bot. 
and if is user we want to do something else we want to do something else and we also the, we want to set the text first actually all right cool and this is pretty much set now a few things i want to go over though before we actually let's just implement this and see what happens <laughs> and then we'll come back so first we need to let me copy and paste this the name and then we got to register it here do identifier and you copy paste it here dun, dun, dun. and well oh, one thing for the table is you can actually put separator style equal to none and it's kind of the same effect but i get this would be better to like not show it at all since we're not going to use it all right and then we also need to let cell equal identifier and we're going to force unwrap it here this should be fine if you're if you're using this in like a production build then you want to like guard let and all that stuff but for us it'll be fine and what we'll do is actually we can uh we can do the cell configure in here so we'll pass in the text and then if you remember from the last video this modulo 2 equals equals 0 that'll let us know if it's the user because this basically lets us know if we're in the even index or the odd index and this is the even index which means it is a user and then the odd index means it's the bot so we do false here and that's pretty much good to go let's hit run and i think we're going to get some errors because there's there's a one there's a few things we missed in the configuring our chat so all right so we load it up here a funny thing i've been asking it what is your name and it gives you like a random name every time let's hit submit or did i hit submit Oh, we don't have the activity indicator set it up yet. We'll do that this video too. <laughs> what is your name? Hi, I'm Mars. Yeah, like it's not, we didn't set up any of the, uh, there's a few constraints we're missing actually. That's what I want to say. Because you see here, it's it's pinning it to the to the beginning. And we also didn't even set up the, the bubble view background color. So if it's the user, we want it to be system blue. If it's the, system gray if it's the computer all right and what's missing here so in here what's missing is so if what's missing is the trailing and the leading anchors and there's like a weird thing about this where you can't just put them here because that's kind of what i was my initial intuition was to like oh you just put a chat label uh what is this this is the user so you do a trailing anchor constraint blah, 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 blah. you would do the trailing anchor is active and then you'd be like this is true right and this gives you a whole bunch of errors like actually if you do it like this though and you account for the leading anchor it'll work like the first two or three cells but then like it goes bonkers because there's there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and this might not be called and it might not be reset every time that the cell is uh, is called and appears so the way you account for that is you want to you create a var a variable and i called it i called one lead which is just an ns layout constraint and another one calling trail which is an ns layout constraint and you you make these you use the what do you call it you make these non-optional <laughs> all right and and then we then you assign them here and where you're at our constraints the first one is a chat label leading anchor constraint and the last one is constraint trolling anchor you do minus eight and then what you do here is this is where you want to configure if it's active or not so this actually i did that wrong this should be not active and then you just flip them for for the bot all right and we should be good to go. Let's run this and see what's up. Well, I think there's going to be a few things I want to change. What is your name? I'm going to hit rule submit. It's loading. Is it loading? Oh, there we go. Haha. -ha. Looks like we have an error. Yeah, like for this one, there's an error. Ah, and I, <laughs> two errors. You want to make sure you have your, you're adding the bubble view to the uh, sub view first. Otherwise, the UI view is going to cover the label and you won't see anything <laughs> like right here. And what else are we missing? 
Hmm. I actually want to make these 12. And this should be negative. That's another issue. Dun, dun. What else do we have? And I, ah, and I actually want these to be 16. Just to give more spacing in between the, the sides. I don't want it hugging the front or the back of the screen too much. All right, now what is your name? I think it's loading. Aha, my name is John. And it looks like, so why is this happening? So, oh, wait. So if you go to the view controller, so if, if the user is true and if it's not, yeah, this is right. Oh, that's funny. So for this trailing, you see I have leading. <laughs> ah, I couldn't see that, that's hilarious. All right, what is your name? Now we should be golden. All right, now just a few more things to add. So first let's add an activity indicator. And again, we can reuse a lot of the stuff we did in our view controller for the Dolly 2 project. So I'm gonna bring in this view indicator and you saw here, we can just copy all of this. And this might be a good hint that we want to refactor a code and make things more um, reusable. Like we could just create a UI view that already has this activity indicator inside of it and that way we don't have to configure all this stuff and it reduces our code in our view controller. That's just something to note. And so when we're fetching, we wanna make this hidden. Wait, where do we have this? Oh, we have this right on the top. All right, and when we get a response, we wanna stop. If we get an error, we also wanna stop. And as for our activity indicator, and also something else that I want to note is I'm going to type a bunch of random stuff and you'll see that it, it scroll, like it, it just keeps going that way. And I don't like the way it looks. And to fix that, you actually need to change all this. Oh, <laughs> I broke my simulator to a UI text view and I rename this to a prompt text view. Oh, and we're going to have to clean up a whole bunch of errors in here. You'll see. You don't need that anymore. You don't need this anymore. Yeah, text view doesn't have a placeholder. Changes the text view. All right, and let's run this. And I think there might be something else I want to change. I kind of like it. says, uh, what, what time is it in Tokyo? And you see, we don't have to change anything here because there's similar properties as a text view. And it's taking a long time for this request. Hmm. Oh, looks like we got an error, huh? Let's see. Is it the text view's fault? Oh, wait. No? Hmm. Let's try this again. Hmm. Looks like we're getting an error. Well, that's strange. I try, I just tried it out with different, like a different prompt and it, it didn't, it didn't, um, didn't give me any errors. Maybe it was just, I guess they didn't know what time it was. So it just, <laughs> it didn't know what to do. There's still some work to be done with chat GPT, but it is helpful at the same time. Uh, just a few more UI things, selection style, none. That gets rid of this selection thing. Looks weird right on the messaging and the message bubbles. Oh, one more thing I think I wanted to do. Um, I think that might be it. Uh, oh, I wanted to do table view scroll to row. I believe it was, um, let me see. You do index path, row, and then for row, you do the chat, which is the array count minus one. You only have one section, it's the index zero. You scroll to the bottom, animate true. Let's run this. And with this, it's like a cool animation. Every new message, it'll automatically scroll to the bottom. Hello there. Oh, and one thing I wanna add to is prompt text view dot text. I want to like empty this out every time it runs. I'll leave it like this, but I'm not going to run it because I want to show you guys the scroll thing. So exciting, right? Oh, I wonder if Xcode is going to account for that line because I hit enter before I hit submit. So I wonder how it'll look on the cell. Oh, looks like we might have broken it. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> you saw that animation? It scrolled to the bottom. Um, what are you doing tomorrow? Ah, look at that animation. I plan to finish some work tasks and take a walk in the park. And that's it, folks. Actually, wait. 
guys to the, shout out to the AI people who <laughs> think it's gonna take over the world. But yeah, that's been another episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed that video. Find it pretty useful and fun. It's pretty cool to play with, to be honest. I like just setting it random things. A cool thing I, or a funny thing I like to do is who it is. Uh, just send it a lyric, like from a random song, out of context, and see what it replies back to you. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and let me know if you have any questions below. Peace. I'm riding between it all in this bird to play. I'm a piece of the puzzle, I'm a fit where you need.